So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the end of our little careers fair jaunt left only with some stern looking businessmen and a bunch of smelly hippies. So without further ado, the first of our final two candidates is... The Parent Sequence, come on down. Oh my god, yeah, let's do this, yeah. Who are these soft-hearted philanthropists and why on Jupiter should you care? In short, The Sequence is a corpus offshoot organization of like-minded, pacifistic individuals who seek to achieve financial gain in a way that doesn't profiteer from conflict. These lovely people are led by a man named Ergo Glast, a shrewd and enigmatic bloke in yet another funny hat. Ugh, looks like somebody glued an A-wing to his head. <clears throat> Moving on. We've barely had any contact with him outside of the standard syndicate interactions, but a while ago he featured heavily in a quest quite appropriately called The Glassed Gambit. Okay, actually, you know what? I take that back. An appropriate name would be Pile of Hot Garbage. Running the same-ish mission four times in a row, one instance of which is impossible to win, does not a happy Tenno make. It's bad quest design. Don't do it. You're better than this. What am I saying? These are the people who tried to sell us escort quests as something new and exciting. Bad D. Bad. You sleep outside tonight. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the Glass Gambit. First off, Glass tells the Tenno the story of the Mycona, hailing from a colony that basically farms the infested for materials. Insert snarky comment about the Hema Grindfest here. It turns out that everyone's favourite nutcase Nefanyo has stolen the Mykonas resources and made off with some of their kids, for presumably some reason privy to creepy old men dressed as void keys, but there you go. Firstly, the Tenno have to defend the Mykonas stronghold from the infested, which have become mysteriously agitated by the upheaval. Hmm, suspicious. After successfully protecting the colony, you receive a quaint little picture drawn by one of the captured children named Niwa, and Glast reveals that he tried to pay a ransom to retrieve not only the children, but an equally mysterious artifact known as the Triuna. Hmm, even more suspicious. Nephi being the colossal sphincter that he is, refuses Glast's offer, which essentially leads to you trying to con Anyo out of his prize by gambling credits on an extremely monotonous point-collecting deathmatch called the Index. Yay, fun! Eventually, after a series of increasingly frustrating index matches, you discover that the Mycona carry a hereditary immunity to the infestation, which, should they be infected with the Triuna, a totemic version of the virus passed from generation to generation, allows them to manipulate the infested through the latter's apparent fear of hybrids. To absolutely no one's surprise, Niwa turns out to be the current holder of the Triuna, because of course giving kids superpowers has worked so well up to this point. In the end, the kids are saved, Neff is sufficiently humiliated, and you are given a choice concerning Niwa's fate. Lotus, ever the mother, offers to cure her of the Triuna that's slowly killing her, whereas Glast scolds her for trying to meddle. Either way, Niwa returns to her family to live a life as happy as one filled with techno-zombies can be. Thank god it's over, that's all I can say. As a reward for this quest, you receive the means to craft an infested manipulating Warframe called Nidus, Interestingly, though not concrete, this lends further credence to the idea that there's a relationship between the Warframes and the Infested, maybe even suggesting that Nidus was some sort of prototype frame created even before the original Primes. As usual, conjecture I suppose, but food for thought. Briefly touching on their tech preferences, predictably they skew towards Corpus gear and even make use of their own proxies. They tend to favour their own custom Secura variants of the Sestra, Penta and Lecter, and employ the use of an ever graceful pack of Moa to hunt down and trample their enemies. As we've mentioned before, the sequence shares hostility with the Steel Meridian, not necessarily for their goals, but more likely their vastly differing methods. It can also be inferred that the Corpus Grenier rivalry hasn't completely evaporated since each syndicate's defection from their respective factions. The sequence also has a less than friendly relationship with the Arbiters of Hexis for reasons that have never really been explicitly stated. However, as I said last time, there are some good theories suggesting that the Arbiters' beef comes from the parent sequence worship of money, and by extension the Orokin, rather than their reverence for the Tenno. Neatly burying its roots into our next topic, the parent sequence has strong ties with the humanitarian group known as New Loka. These guys are way into meditation, gardening, the near fanatical worship of Earth and by extension the purity of unaltered human form, and yoga. While they may seem like your garden variety tree-hugging hippies, make no mistake, these guys are viciously xenophobic, almost to the same degree as the Grenier. They see any kind of artificial enhancement as an abomination with absolutely no place in their ideal world. 
Just to briefly touch on their tech situation, as I'm sure they wouldn't like it drawn attention to, New Loka generally makes use of the Sancti series of weapons, which includes the Kastanas, Magistar, and Tigris. Because what xenophobe would be complete without a double barrel shotgun? They've also got mods geared towards the Furious, Skarna, and Volcar, with that last one being particularly odd considering their stance on the Grenier, but there you go. Even weirder, they send out packs of ancient infested healers to, I guess, heal their enemies to death. I mean, on the other hand, I can't exactly say fighting off a bunch of belligerent succulents trying to emulate Scorpion from Mortal Kombat has ever been something I really expected, so points for originality, I guess. Moving on to infrastructure, New Loka is run by a charming woman named Amarin, who I've actually mentioned before in my video on the Orican Empire. She was the quest giver and primary source of contact in the Silver Grove questline, which is really all Loka has been involved in so far. In the quest, Amarin has you head to Earth to defend one of its few remaining untainted ecosystems, named the Silver Grove, from a Grenier incursion. A word which here means fire, and lots of it. Between romps around the solar system on a herbaceous scavenger hunt, you discover that the grove itself is sentient, and it eventually comes out that an Orican scientist named Silvana used transference technology, yes, the same kind used to control the Warframes, to transplant her mind into the forest itself. This does result in her ending up sounding like the Grudge, which, I'll be honest, creeped the hell out of me. Amarin is understandably conflicted over this revelation as Silvana's self-sacrifice goes against the New Loka doctrine of purity above all else. Is a tree still a tree if it's a woman? After popping to the garden centre, you eventually defeat the Grenier and activate the Grove's defence systems, whatever the hell they might be, thus allowing Silvana to independently protect herself in future. Amarin realises her views do not align with the truth of the situation, and suggests that New Loka may have to rethink its core principles to allow for a more open-minded approach in the future. Oh, how sweet she's growing as a person! Moving on to their buds, aha, uh -huh, plant joke, Sorry, there was a bug. We're well aware that New Loka and the parent sequence get along due to their shared goal of long-standing peace, but they have much less amicable relationships with the Steel Meridian and Cephalon Suda. Their opinion on the Steel Meridian lines up with their xenophobic tendencies, and that's all well and racist, but their relationship to Cephalon Suda is slightly more intriguing. Obviously they take issue with the core concept of artificial intelligence usurping their oh-so-precious human form, but I've got to wonder how they'd react to the Cephalon's, uh... Situation. After some soul searching, Amarin became more accepting of Sylvanas new post as Guardian of the Forest Sprites or whatever, but isn't Audis and Co's deal essentially just the same thing minus the eco-activism? For game mechanics sake, I doubt we'd ever see New Loka's opinion soften on our lightbulb buddies, but if they're willing to accept a talking tree, and assuming we're right and all Cephalons were at some point human, it's not that much of a stretch for them to take pity on the poor buggers? Hey, who knows? Maybe the racist gardener's cult isn't so bad after all. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back, my friends. I hope you're all doing splendidly. This is just a quick note to let you know that I was a guest on the latest episode of the 10 o'clock podcast run by Xeno G Lion and MDR Laws. Uh, the podcast is generally just them having a chat and a laugh over mechanics and Warframe news that's recently come out, and they release an episode every week, uh, unlike some people. And I had a bunch of fun being a guest on there. I've uh, I've never done anything like that before, and they were super welcoming, and they're both lovely guys, so please go and check that out over the, the link currently floating in front of your eyeballs. Moving on, there shouldn't be too much of a wait for new content, I'm sure you'll be pleased to know. Seeing as Harrow's Quest is just around the corner, I thought I'd probably cover that, and uh, it looks super exciting because all the comic lore dumps and all that, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but you totally go and have a look at that. The Rail comic looks fantastic. Uh, old Zaraman 10 0 and all that. Also, I'm thinking of doing a speculation video after Tenocon spews out some juicy new teasers, inevitably, so uh, look forward to that. As usual, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, you can go ahead and press that like button with your mind fingers. And if you'd like to see more, you can subscribe to my channel down below. As always, guys, I've been Luke, this has been Lawframe, and you have been wonderful. Farewell, my friends, until the next time.